Church, are you ready for the best day ever? We are on week four of February. It's going to be a great day. Come on, grab a friend. Let's go. Got a rhythm in my heart and in my soul. Got a reason for this joy I can't control. love I know what you give to me is not for me to keep it's for the world to see your love every day you're giving me your kindness every day you're giving me your love oh. with every single breath I am reminded that what you give is more than Shine, you make me glow You pick me up when I am feeling low I wanna sing, I wanna dance And give everyone a chance To hear about this in this love I know What you give to me is not for me to keep It's for the world to see your love about who is your neighbor someone asked Jesus that question well who's my neighbor and Jesus gave a really good answer go get your Bibles and we will have Bible story time are you ready go I got my Bible you got yours okay open up your Bible to Luke we're gonna look and look Luke chapter 10 your Bible story starts all the way at 25 but I like the part in the story where Jesus gets going and tells the answer to the guys that wanted to know well, who's my neighbor and asked all these questions well did you know that Jesus answered a lot of his questions through story that's called parables and woven into all of the story is the answer that you will hear today about who is your neighbor and how you should treat them so before we read the story, let's watch the video. Ready? Lights, camera, action. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Luke, chapter 10. 
verses 25 through 37. Everywhere Jesus went, crowds of people followed. His popularity made the religious leaders kind of nervous, how he turned their expectations upside down. What is he up to anyway? So they began to look for ways to trip him up. One day, a law expert saw his chance to test Jesus. Teacher, <clears throat> what must I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus turned the question right back on the law expert. What is written in the law? How do you read it? Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind. And love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly. Do this and you will live. But the law expert wanted to discover the very least he could do to obey the law. So he got tricky. Ah, uh, yes, but really, who is my neighbor? Jesus looked directly at the law expert and he saw what was in his heart. So Jesus began a story. A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho. Now, if Jesus were to tell this story today, it might go something like this. There's a man that we'll call uh, Ben who needed to travel from Jerusalem to Jericho. It was a lonely, rugged road, but he was well prepared. Got my water skin, got my quail jerky. Ah, uh, got my snake repellent. Uh, Got my large number of clinking gold coins. <laughs> Stick them up. Uh-oh, forgot my mace. A band of robbers attacked Ben. They took everything, leaving him half dead by the side of the road. Help, please, help me. <sighs> there was no one to hear. The sun beat down. Shadows shifted as the day wore on. At last, he heard footsteps. Through shimmering heat, he could barely see a man in khakis and a blue button-down shirt. In the beginning, uh, um, you know, let me Google the Greek word for beginning. That'll make me sound more intelligent. The man was a preacher working on his Sunday sermon. Help me. The preacher spotted Ben lying there in the dust, but he immediately looked down at his phone, pretending not to see. Instead, he crossed to the other side of the street, putting as much space between him and Ben as possible. Please. But the preacher was gone. Ben's throat was dry now. He could barely swallow. Finally, he saw someone else. I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river in my soul. A worship leader was now trekking down the road. He wore skinny jeans, uh, an unnecessary scarf, and uh, AirPods. Help, help me. Well, the worship leader definitely saw Ben, but he cranked up the volume on his AirPods and shimmied to the other side of the road as he passed. Uh, I've got peace like a river, I've got peace like a river, and I'm gonna river, I'm gonna run away. As the man's voice faded away, Ben was left in despair. Shadows lengthened as evening approached. Once again, Ben heard someone coming. Turning his head, he could just barely make out a donkey. Perhaps he could tell from the way the person was dressed that this person wasn't a Jew. He was a Samaritan. Oh no. Jews and Samaritans were enemies. Even though the two groups were related, there was a history of bitter conflict between them. And the Samaritans worshiped God in a different way than the Jews did. Long story short, a Samaritan would have been the last person Ben would have wished to find him. What's that by the road? Instead of ignoring Ben though, the Samaritan man slowed down and got off his donkey. Oh no, who did this? The Samaritan quickly rummaged for supplies in his bag. Here, I have some water. Those are nasty gashes. I've got oil and wine to clean them out. The Samaritan bandaged Ben's wounds and hefted him onto his own donkey. Steady, steady. Hey, wrap your arms around his neck, like this. By the time darkness fell, the Samaritan brought Ben to an inn where the injured man could recover. Thank you, thank you. In the morning, the Samaritan gave the innkeeper some money. Please take care of this man. I'll return and pay you back for any extra expenses. Goodbye. 
Thank you. When Jesus finished the story, no one said a word. He looked directly at the law expert. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of robbers? The law expert fidgeted. To admit that the Samaritan had acted as a true neighbor was to say that everyone is a neighbor, no matter how different they may be. I suppose it, in this case, one would have to say the man who had mercy on him. Go and do likewise. Jesus' story was clear. Love your neighbor as yourself isn't limited to just the people in your neighborhood. Your neighbor means anyone who needs you to show them God's love. Okay, great story. Let's recap one more time. So I have my Jesus here. Jesus was telling his story to all the people. He said to all the people, well, there once was a Jewish man that was walking down the road. He was attacked. Poor guy. He was attacked, he was beat up, and he was left on the side of the road. He was even robbed. Nobody knew what happened. He was just on the side of the road, just broken and sad. Then, along the way, stay there, stay there. Along the way came a priest, a pastor, and he just came along and he walked on the other side of the road and he was like, ooh, you look broken. I'll pray for you. He didn't help him at all. He just rolled on by. And then, who else? A Levite, hard worker, saw him. Stay there, guy. A hard worker came along. He also was a man of God, but he didn't want to do anything with him. He said, uh, hope you feel better soon, man. Uh, bye. And just rolled on by. Then, some time later after that, a Samaritan. Well, back in the Bible time, Samaritans weren't anyone's favorite people. And Jesus knew that. Jesus said, a Samaritan walked on by. He was kind of an outcast for a lot of people, but this Samaritan saw this broken man on the side of the road and said, hey man, do you need some help? Come on, let me help you. We need to go get you some help. And he lifted him up, put him up on his donkey and took him all the way into town to the inn. And in the, in the inn, well, that's a, like a hotel. Um, and it was right next to like where a doctor would be available to help this man. He paid for the doctor to help this man feel better. He helped him all the way. And you know what? He was okay. The Good Samaritan is a man who stopped to help. He didn't care that he wasn't liked by anybody. He didn't care that this guy on the side of the road was different than him. This Samaritan just wanted to be kind. And that's what the story was all about. That's what Jesus was trying to say. It doesn't matter where you're from or who you are or even what you look like, we can all be kind. Everyone is your neighbor and everyone should be treated like they're valuable. The Samaritan put value in this guy. He told him, come on, get up. You matter and you matter to God. He took care of him and he was all better. Isn't that a cool story? And the man that actually, all the people that was asking Jesus, like, hey, who is your neighbor and all that? And Jesus answered, what do you think they said after they heard that story? Do you think they were mad or were they glad to understand that, oh, everybody is my neighbor? I think if I was sitting in the crowd, I would probably say, yeah, I think I could be neighbor to everybody and I could be kind to everybody because everyone matters to God. It doesn't matter where anyone's from, what they look like, what they sound like, or even what they believe in or where they live. Jesus said one thing's for sure, love your neighbor as yourself. Love your neighbor and be kind. Everyone matters to God. Well, if Jesus said that, well then it must be true. I'll follow that every day. Wow. All right. Well, you should read this Bible story with your family. Maybe you could pick it up and say, let's find Luke chapter 10. And you guys can read the whole story together as a family. All right. Thanks for Bible time. Bye. Ah!
Oh. Hey, dude. <laughs> I gotcha. Every day. Hey, you want to go to work together? Can I sit at your desk? No, you have your own desk. Oh. Mm -hmm. okay. All right. See you in like two seconds. Okay. Okay. What's the password though? <laughs> the password. All right. Yeah. Um, donut. Marshmallow. Oh. You lose. Bye. Okay. <laughs> How you doing? Can you see? What? What's all those balls there? Bottom. Fact. Uh huh. I bought them all. Wow. Fact. They're for the birthday box. Mm. Oh. Yeah, we just kind of we get used to her. She's just different, you know. We. Uh, some days she's a lot more different than others, and some days she's just like us. We, we've kind of gotten used to her acts and how she is. She loves that afro. It's not really her hair, but I wouldn't tell her. It's, it's kind of grown on us. Yeah. I guess it's okay. Yeah. Except for the time she put bugs in my soup. That was funny. Yeah. Um and the marshmallows and my soda pop. Yeah, she really likes marshmallows, like a lot. <laughs> Now, do the clown, what's your favorite snack? No, what's your favorite snack? Why not marshmallows? Marshmallows is my favorite snack. Whatever. Then we're not friends. gotten used to it I've gotten used to it I mean like to say be kind to the people that are different from you it's okay she's here for a reason and she matters so yeah I hope you had a great time at kids church today I had a great time too me and Jesus and the Good Samaritan and even the guy that got stuck on the side of the road. <laughs> we had a great time telling our Bible story and I hope you remember our Bible verse. It's in Colossians 3.12. So put on that kindness this week. Put it on for the rest of your life. Choose to be kind. Choose to show kindness to everyone you meet, even your neighbors. All right, we'll see you next time. Bye.